Thank you, Peter. Uh, ministers, first of all, I'd like to thank you for putting this point on the agenda and to just say that your uh, very important input will be feeding into the preparations of the proposals that we are uh, currently revising uh, and looking at the EU's animal welfare legislation. And the fact that animal welfare is so regularly discussed at uh, ministerial level shows the importance that is attributed to this issue. The Swedish Presidency Conference on Animal Welfare at the end of this week will be the latest of these regular discussions, and I'm very much looking forward to hearing um, its outcome. During many of our previous discussions, there have been many calls to revise the EU animal welfare legislation, and this is for a number of reasons. And several of you have highlighted the need for the legislation to better reflect scientific and technological evidence and developments and sustainability challenges, but as well as societal expectations and ethical concerns. I want to share with you that the fitness check has confirmed this need. Fur farming falls within the scope of the existing legislation on the protection of animals kept for farming purposes, where it is subject only to general requirements without species-specific rules. It's important to note that there is no scientific opinion available as yet from, the, from EFSA on the welfare of fur animals to steer the Commission's work on this area. EFSA has been working intensively in recent months and has delivered a large number of opinions on a major, um, on a major species of farmed animals. And priority was understandably given to the species that are mainly farmed today in all member states, such as dairy cows, or to species such as broilers or pigs, for which specific legislation exists and needs updating. In addition, a roadmap was agreed for future opinions on several species to further support the Commission's work after the adoption of the proposals. The ongoing impact assessment for the revision is also considering the socioeconomic impact of the first sector in Europe. I have taken good note of the results of the very successful European Citizens Initiative for Free Europe. Next month, together with Vice President Jourova, I will meet with the initiative's organizers and carefully examine the arguments put forward. The Commission will reply to it by the end of the year, and I will be able to say more on the Commission's response in due course. Thank you.